Hi, good morning, how are you? Today I want to try and talk to you for 10 minutes about oil, petroleum. Let's see how we go. This is a big topic. 3, 2, 1, go. Okay, what is oil? Well, petroleum comes from the Latin petra, which means rock, and oleum, which means oil. So it's basically rock oil, but of course it's not from rock. Um, how is oil made? Well, millions of years ago, animals, plants, dinosaurs, living things died, and their matter fell into the oceans, and gradually, over millions of years, layers of sediment, layers of sand, built up on top of them. Um, as this sand increased, it uh, became extremely heavy, and great weight, great mass causes intense heat and pressure. And this intense heat and pressure basically cooked these animal parts and broke them down into their oils and gas. Now this oil and this gas um, stays in certain pockets. Some of it's disappeared, some of it is still there, but there are pockets of oil and gas all over the world. So how do we use it? Well. Oil has been used for thousands of years. Some oil naturally rises to the surface. Because it's in these pockets, as the earth moves and shifts, some of it naturally comes to the surface and you get lakes of oil. And oil's been used since about 4,000 years ago. Um, it was used as an asphalt. It was put on walls to protect walls. Um, it was also used for lighting, of course. Um, there are signs that oil lamps were used in the temples and places like that. Okay, now before oil became uh, popular in Europe, before it took off in Europe, um, we used another kind of oil. Can you guess what that is? Whale oil. Basically, um, we used whale oil. Whales were killed, the fats were boiled down, and the oil was refined, and it was used for a number of things. Mainly for lighting, but it was also used to make soap and margarine. You could eat whale margarine. I wonder what that tastes like. But it was basically used for lighting. Now, in the 19th century, with the major discoveries of oil, whale oil fell into disuse. People stopped using whale oil and they started using regular oil, petroleum. Now, it was, again, mostly used for lighting. Almost all of the oil that was found and was shipped was used for lighting in the cities. So, oil's primary use was lighting. However, with the invention of the combustion engine, with the invention of the automobile, the use of oil, the requirement for oil, the need for oil, rocketed, skyrocketed. Suddenly, we weren't using it so much for lighting, we were using it for our cars, our vehicles. And then, of course, with the discovery that you could make electricity by burning oil, it took off even more. Um, right now, we use oil for our power, we use it for our vehicles, we also use it for plastic. Everything we have that is plastic is made of oil. However, not as much oil goes into making plastic as you think. About 10 to 12 percent of total oil goes into plastic. Um, about 75 percent of our total oil goes to making electricity. So if we could move into greener um, renewable energy sources, of course, we could save a lot of the oil. We'll talk about that in a bit. So how do we get the oil? Well, as I said, some of it naturally rises to the surface. That's pretty easy to get. Some of it we have to pump. You drill down into these pockets of oil, and then you basically pump the oil up using machine pumps. A lot of oil is found under the sea. Of course, most of our earth is covered in sea, so it's going to be logical that most of the oil is under the sea. To get that, of course, you have to use oil rigs, which basically float on the sea and pump, uh, drill way down into the ground and pump the oil up. Um, in 1994, the first few oil rigs um, drilled about a kilometer down into the ground. Now they can drill about three or four kilometers down and pump the oil up from down there. There is also shale oil, which is a type of rock that has lots of oil in it. You can actually burn this rock, and they get that out by heating it and refining the oil you get from it. So there are many different ways of getting oil. Okay, um, how much oil is there? Well, we've all been taught from a young age that there is not enough oil, we're going to run out. Um, according to research, there are about 1.6 trillion barrels of oil left on the earth that we know about. Of course, there are many and more areas that we haven't found. But we have been told time and again, I was brought up with this information, that we are going to run out of oil. We don't have enough oil left on Earth. Now, that is not entirely true. Let me tell you why. The idea that we're going to run out of oil was um, brought up, was started in about 1950. And by 1950s standards, by the speed at which they were using oil in the 1950s and by the amount of oil that they knew existed on the earth in the 1950s, that seemed very, very true. That seemed like a huge probability. 
However, a few things have changed. Firstly, we found more oil. We found different ways of getting it. We can get, dig deeper down. We can go further out into the sea. We have found more oil. Secondly, um, we found uh, better ways of using it. We're much more economical than we used to be. A lot of plastics are recycled. A lot of things made of oil are recycled. Um, we're more economical at making electricity from the oil. So we don't need as much oil to make the power. Uh, most of our uh, devices, most of the things we use, don't use as much power as they used to. Look at a washing machine, for example. They're far more economical than they used to be. So we don't use as much power as we used to. So we're not using the oil up as fast as they thought we would in the 1950s. So even though we, the amount of oil on Earth is obviously limited, we're not using it as fast as we used to, so we probably won't run out. Very controversial. We'll never know that, of course. I won't be here. Maybe my daughter or my daughter's children will know that, but I, I don't know. But I think most likely we won't run out of oil. Okay, now what are some of the problems with oil? Well, one of them, of course, is pollution. About 80% of our oil goes to making power. How do you do that? Well, you burn the oil. When you burn the oil, you burn the oil to heat the water, to create the steam, to turn the turbines, to make the power, generate the power. Of course, when you burn oil, what do you get? Well, oil is mostly carbon, of course, and hydrogen. So when you burn oil, you end up with carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and water. Of course, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are two of the greatest greenhouse gases. So when you burn oil, you add to the greenhouse effect. You add to climate change, of course. Um, of course, we have oil spills as well. There are many other um, environmental problems with oil, but I suppose pollution is probably the greatest. Which country uses the most oil, do you think? Well, no surprises to hear it's America. America uses about 19.8 million barrels of oil a day, which is about 21% of the total world oil use. China comes next with about 11%, and then we have India with 5%. India is slowly increasing, of course, with a huge population. What is it, 1.2 billion people? They're going to be using a staggering amount of oil. And of course, China and India are developing. China is a second world country. India is a third world country heading up to the second world. As they develop, they're going to use even more electricity, and they're going to use even more oil. So that's going to increase in the future. Then number four is Japan. Japan um, population is declining. Things are becoming much more economical, so probably their oil usage will shrink, hopefully. Of course, Japan doesn't have any natural oil. They have to import everything from other countries. Now, uh, oil is obviously a polluter. Using oil is obviously not good for the environment. So what can we do? There are many other forms of um, environmentally friendly power, of course. You have wind power, you have solar power, wave power. There are many other ways of generating power. Why don't we? Why don't we use these? Well, many people say that they're not economical, they're not logical, they don't actually work, which is not true. I mean, of course they, of course they work, they've been proven to work. Now, um, there is a lot of doubt in the social conscious, there is a lot of doubt in the world that oil actually causes climate change. A lot of people say that climate change is a conspiracy. It's, it's a governmental conspiracy to try and get our tax money, of course. Now, where does this doubt come from? Where do all these fears come from? Well, of course, they come from the oil companies. The oil companies have a staggering amount of money, not just oil, oil and coal, a staggering amount of money, which they use to pay scientists and to pay representatives to put their word forward. And of course, they cannot prove that climate change isn't happening because it obviously is. So what do they do? They instill doubt. They instill this um, fear into the people. All you have to do is repeat the question, are you sure? Are you sure it's climate change? But can you trust the government? Are you sure? All you have to do is repeat that doubt a few times and it starts to take off. And once a few people believe it, they start to spread it. So if you look into climate change, if you look at most of the scientists that have come forward to say that climate change is not actually real, is not actually happening, is not human caused, you can trace their finance, you can trace their funding back to the oil and the coal industries. But anyway, that's another talk for another day. So, that's oil. Will we run out? Probably not. Will we be able to change to other sources of power? I think we will. I think we can. All we need is a push from the people and it will start to happen. It already is happening and it can keep increasing.
Okay, that was 10 minutes talking about oil. I hope you understood. Thank you. As always, if you look in the description below here, you can find a link, which is for the transcript for this talk. Um, you can find questions, multiple choice and essay type questions. Um, you can try and answer the essay questions. You can write them, you can speak them. And also I have sample answers in there as well. So you can have a look and see, uh, compare your answers with my answers, of course. Uh, I also have the MP3, so you can download this talk and listen to it wherever you want, if you want to. Thank you. If you enjoyed this, please click like, share it with your friends, help your friends study English too. And if you subscribe, you'll hear about these talks whenever I make them, which is hopefully every week. All right. Thank you for coming. I'll talk to you next week. Goodbye.